The first thing we want to do is to chart the temperature for the date. 9.22. And we're going to do it the day after. That way we know the exact. So underneath the 2, you're going to put 9.22. That is the date we're doing. We're doing yesterday. That way we know the exact high and the exact low. If I had already looked at yesterday's high and low on the one that I had from the day before, and guess what? When I looked at it today, it had changed because yesterday they were predicting the high and low, and now they have the actual temperature for the high and the low. All right, so yesterday's high was 75. The high is what color? Red. Red. So above line number two, you're going to go all the way up to 75, and you're going to put a red dot. Now, there is not a 75, so you need to go where? In, in the middle. middle. Yeah, in the middle between 70 and 80. You're going to put that red dot right there in the middle between 70 and 80. And yesterday's low was 43. That sounds familiar, doesn't it? That's the same one. Yes, that is the same one we had yesterday. So now get your blue, and you're going to put a dot about the same spot that this on the second line. <clears throat> okay, so 43. Same low. All right? And I will keep track of it each day and I will we will fill in tomorrow and um well we'll fill in today, tomorrow um when we come back on Monday. So we were not going to do today until later, but I'll keep track of it, and we will fill in all these other days that we're missing. Like we'll fill in Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. We can all fill in those on Monday, and we should be done by then, shouldn't we? Yeah. So Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Yep, we would be done by then. Okay. So we'll finish the rest of the week on Monday. And then I'll show you how we're going to connect all the blue dots and then we'll connect all the red dots to see whether the temperature was going up or going down or in this case, staying the same. All right. The next thing I want to do with you is read. A little bit of reading to do. And then we have an experiment. Now, I told you to go ahead and look at page 65. We are going to do that experiment that's on page 65, which has to do with air pressure. And so we're going to show air pressure change. So let's start on page 66 with the reading. Everybody on page 66. Now we did the comprehension check at the top. So we're starting in the middle of the page where it says meteorology. Okay, can y'all please put your pencils down? I don't want you to take time to put them away, but just put them down. And get your attention to the middle of page 66. Eric? I know, Eric, but your hand is like this. How can you read when there's something in front of your face, buddy? Get yourself close to your book. Move your chair closer. There you go. Meteorology. As we learn about how weather works, we will also learn how to collect and graph weather data. There are always weather scientists doing this so that we know what kind of weather to prepare for. A weather scientist is called a meteorologist. Meteorologist collect weather data from satellites, weather balloons, and weather airplanes. They have many different methods to forecast or predict, predict weather. You have probably seen a meteorologist give your local forecast using Doppler radar, and that would be on the news. So they give the weather, they predict what's going to happen. And that would be why when I looked at the high and low temperature for yesterday, and then I looked at it again today, it had changed. Because yesterday they were predicting or forecasting what it was going to be by what they know about the weather patterns. And today I could actually see what the actual high and low were yesterday. All right, on the next page they're talking about keeping track of the weather on a graph. And it's similar to what we already are doing. Turn the page now to page 68. <clears throat> All right, on page 68, they're talking about the water cycle. Everybody should be on page 68. 
The atmosphere is always at work, making sure the earth is neither too hot nor too cold. The air is always moving to create wind. Water also moves in a continuous cycle. Rain helps to keep fresh water sources clean. People and animals cannot live without water. Plants cannot grow without water. God gave the earth a water cycle because all life depends on it. Um, Jamie, you have to come at the door. All right, where were we? People and animals cannot live without water. Did I read that already? Yeah. Plants cannot grow without water. God gave the earth a water cycle because all life depends on it. Evaporation. We already talked about this a little bit. In fact, one of the things we're going to do for an experiment today is the beginning of an evaporation experiment. Evaporation. Puddles, whether you like to splash in them or walk all the way around them, are only around for a little while. When they dry up, where does the water go? Remember, matter cannot disappear, but it can change state. The water went back into the air as water vapor. We call this evaporation. When you look at that word evaporation, do you see the word vapor in it? Yes. No. Well, look at it then. The word vapor is part of the word evaporation. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, because that is water turning into a vapor. Evaporation is always happening on Earth. Heat energy from the sun warms the Earth's water. Heat energy causes tons of water to be evaporated each day from oceans, lakes, and ponds. Plants also give off water into the air. All of this warm water vapor rises high into the air. All right. The only other thing you need to do is look at page 69, and that is talking about filling two jars. Now, I didn't bring jars because I didn't want to worry about breaking them, but I brought two clear glasses, um, plastic cups, and we are going to fill them with the exact same amount of water. And we already sort of talked about this another time, but we're going to put one in the sunny window, and then I'm going to hide one in the corner where there is no sun shining on it, and we're going to see which one evaporates faster, okay? So how many of you think the one in the sunny window is going to evaporate faster? How many of you think the one that I put over in the corner in the dark is going to evaporate faster? All right, well, we're going to have to see, okay, and figure that one out. All right, now I want to do the air pressure. The water evaporation one will take longer, and we will fill up the water, um, the cups. All right, but what I have right here adjust this because there's too much of a glare. All right, so what I have here is a balloon and I have a bottle, but this is not water in this bottle. I'm using a water bottle, but this is not water. All right, this is not water, this is vinegar. Okay, so I put vinegar in this bottle and then I put a balloon on top. And does this balloon have air in it? No. Um, maybe the tiniest bit because there's always going to be air in there, right? If I squeeze on it, you can see the air making it puff up, right? All right. But I put something in the balloon. Yes. Something? Baking powder. Yes, I put baking powder in the balloon. All right? And so when I pick up the balloon, you're going to see a change in the air pressure. Okay? Because when it falls into the vinegar, there's going to be a reaction between these two the liquids. Right. Yeah, the balloon is filling I think up it's going to blow up. Yeah. It doesn't blow up completely like if you're blowing on it, but it does. You can see how it, you can see the change in oh, air pressure. About the bottle. No, it's not going to blow up. Should the balloon is. No, it's probably like this. But if I were to let go of the balloon, it might pop right off. I'm not going to let go. So do you guys see the change in the air pressure? Yeah. Okay, the chemical reaction caused a change in the air pressure, and it's similar to the change in air pressure that causes different weather events. Yes? 
when the vinegar and the baking soda get mixed, they release um, carbon dioxide. Yep. And that's what fills up the balloon. Yep. So there's a carbon dioxide, which is one of the gases that we talked about are in the atmosphere. Remember, it was nitrogen was the most, and then oxygen was next. And then carbon dioxide was just that little tiny sliver, which is mixed in with lots of other gases, because we just said different gases, and that was the little tiny sliver on the pie. All right, I can already tell it's starting to lose its fizz. All right, so it's not going to do any more, but that's pretty big, isn't it? There's so much chemical reaction that causes this to fill with carbon dioxide, causing a change in air pressure.